Patent ductus arteriosus, Wikipedia article audio. Patent ductus arteriosus is a condition wherein the ductus arteriosus fails to close after birth. Signs and symptoms. Cause. Diagnosis. Normal anatomy. Prevention. Treatment. Prognosis. History. Adult. Early symptoms are uncommon, but in the first year of life include increased work of breathing and poor weight gain. An uncorrected PDA may lead to congestive heart failure with increasing age. The ductus arteriosus is a fetal blood vessel that closes soon after birth. In a PDA, the vessel does not close and remains patent, resulting in irregular transmission of blood between the aorta and the pulmonary artery. PDA is common in newborns with persistent respiratory problems such as hypoxia, and has a high occurrence in premature newborns. Premature newborns are more likely to be hypoxic and have PDA due to underdevelopment of the heart and lungs. A PDA allows a portion of the oxygenated blood from the left heart to flow back to the lungs by flowing from the aorta to the pulmonary artery. If this shunt is substantial, the neonate becomes short of breath, the additional fluid returning to the lungs increases lung pressure, which in turn increases the energy required to inflate the lungs. This uses more calories than normal and often interferes with feeding in infancy. This condition, as a constellation of findings, is called congestive heart failure. In some congenital heart defects a PDA may need to remain open, as it is the only way that oxygenated blood can mix with deoxygenated blood. In these cases, prostaglandins are used to keep the DA open until surgical correction of the heart defect is completed. Common symptoms include Patients typically present in good health, with normal respirations and heart rate. If the PDA is moderate or large, widened pulse pressure and bounding peripheral pulses are frequently present, reflecting increased left ventricular stroke volume and diastolic runoff of blood into the pulmonary vascular bed. Prominent suprasternal and carotid pulsations may be noted secondary to increased left ventricular stroke volume. A PDA is sometimes idiopathic. Known risk factors include PDA is usually diagnosed using non-invasive techniques. Echocardiography and associated Doppler studies are the primary methods of detecting PDA. Electrocardiography, in which electrodes are used to record the electrical activity of the heart, is not particularly helpful as no specific rhythms or ECG patterns can be used to detect PDA. A chest X-ray may be taken, which reveals overall heart size and the appearance of blood flow to the lungs. A small PDA most often accompanies a normal-sized heart and normal blood flow to the lungs. A large PDA generally accompanies an enlarged cardiac silhouette and increased blood flow to the lungs. In the developing fetus, the DA is the vascular connection between the pulmonary artery and the aortic arch that allows most of the blood from the right ventricle to bypass the fetus lungs, which are fluid-filled and compressed. During fetal development, this shunt protects the right ventricle from pumping against the high resistance in the lungs, which can lead to right ventricular failure if the DA closes in utero. When the newborn takes his or her first breath, the lungs open and pulmonary vascular resistance decreases. After birth, the lungs release bradykinin to constrict the smooth muscle wall of the DA and reduce blood flow as it narrows and then completely closes. In most newborns with a patent ductus arteriosus, the blood flow is reversed from that of in utero flow, i.e., 
the blood flow is from the higher pressure aorta to the now lower pressure pulmonary arteries. In normal newborns, the DA is substantially narrowed within 12-24 hours after birth, and seals completely after three weeks. The primary stimulus for closure of the DA is an increase in neonatal blood oxygen content. Withdrawal from maternal circulating prostaglandins also contributes to ductal closure. The residual scar tissue from the fibrotic remnants of the DA, called the ligamentum arteriosum, remains in the normal adult heart. Illustration of Patent Ductus Arteriosus Patent Ductus Arteriosus An echocardiogram of a stent persisting ductus arteriosus, one can see the aortic arch and the stent leaving. The pulmonary artery is not seen. An echocardiogram of a coiled persisting ductus arteriosus one can see the aortic arch, the pulmonary artery, and the coil between them. Some evidence suggests that endomethacin administration on the first day of life to all preterm infants reduces the risk of developing a PDA and the complications associated with PDA. Endomethacin treatment in premature infants also may reduce the need for surgical intervention. Neonates without adverse symptoms may simply be monitored as outpatients, while symptomatic PDA can be treated with both surgical and non-surgical methods. Surgically, the DA may be closed by ligation, either manually tied shut, or with intravascular coils or plugs that leads to formation of a thrombus in the DA. Devices developed by Franz Freudenthal block the blood vessel with woven structures of nitinol wire. Because prostaglandin E2 is responsible for keeping the DA open, NSAIDs such as indomethacin or a special form of ibuprofen have been used to initiate PDA closure. Recent findings from a systematic review concluded that for closure of a PDA in preterm and slash or low birth weight infants, ibuprofen is as effective as indomethacin. It also causes fewer side effects and reduces the risk of necroticing enterocolitis. Another recent review showed that paracetamol may be effective for closure of a PDA in preterm infants. More recently, PDAs can be closed by percutaneous interventional method. A platinum coil can be deployed via a catheter through the femoral vein or femoral artery, which induces thrombosis. Alternatively, a PDA occluder device, composed of nitinol mesh, is deployed from the pulmonary artery through the PDA. If left untreated, the disease may progress from left to right shunt to right to left shunt, called Eisenmenger's syndrome. Pulmonary hypertension is a potential long-term outcome, which may require a heart and slash or lung transplant. Another complication of PDA is intraventricular hemorrhage. Robert E. Gross, MD performed the first successful ligation of a patent ductus arteriosus on an eight-year-old girl at Children's Hospital Boston in 1938. Since PDA is usually identified in infants, it is less common in adults, but it can have serious consequences, and is usually corrected surgically upon diagnosis. Tachycardia, respiratory problems, dyspnea, continuous machine-like heart murmur, cardiomegaly, left subclavicular thrill, bounding pulse, widened pulse pressure, increased cardiac output, increased systolic pressure, poor growth, differential cyanosis, i.e. cyanosis of the lower extremities but not of the upper body. Preterm birth, congenital rubella syndrome chromosomal abnormalities, genetic conditions such as Louis Dietz syndrome, Wiedemann-Steiner syndrome, and Char syndrome. Patent ductus arteriosus, Stanford Children's Health, 
patent ductus arteriosus information from Seattle Children's Hospital Heart Center, patent ductus arteriosus causes from U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, patent ductus arteriosus from Merck, fetal circulation at berkeley.edu, information about PDA, the hospital for sick children, Down's Heart Group Easy to Understand Diagram and Explanation of PDA PDA Occluder M Plots or PDA Occluder Device Used for Percutaneous Closure of PDAs Children's Hospital Boston Archives, Patent Ductus Arteriosus Information for Parents